Bill Capsalis, Executive Director of Naturally Boulder, the community of Colorado's natural products industry. Welcome on the Business Brief. Oh, thanks, Ryan. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, Bill. Bill, the natural products and organic food industry is growing rapidly in Colorado and across the U.S., estimated to be a $250 billion plus market, fueled in part by customer demand for healthy food and e-commerce enabling greater access. Colorado is home to a cluster of natural food companies, a number of which were started by entrepreneurs in the 60s and 70s from their basements and garages. Bill, tell us more about this fascinating and global industry. Sure, happy to, Ryan. And uh, uh, I think that the estimate for 2022 looks like 300 billion. So growing. Wow. Um, and it has been growing. I've been involved in the industry for 25 years now. And what I've noticed is that, um, you know, while it's while it seems big, um, it, it's very small compared to like how much food is actually purchased in this country and in this world. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's we're still scratching and clawing to, to get good products out there. But uh, in the in the North American continent, we estimate there are roughly 18,000 national organic brands. Um, you know, we see a very small percentage of those at our national trade shows. Most of them are small, about 65% of them do less than 5 million in sales. So they're all small, they're all scrappy. They're uh, trying to get a toehold, they're making innovative, cool products, and they're just trying to, you know, get better for you products out there. Some of them have really done well. Some of them have expanded, grown, and sold. Um, there's a few success stories in Boulder, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of. So, uh, we're just continuing to see this innovation pipeline occur. Large CPG firms are pretty good at scale. They know how to build things. They know how to make things grow, but they're not so great at innovation. And small companies that are you know, nimble and more innovative are really good at that and not so great at scale. So we're, we're always trying to find ways to get those two uh, you know, things to collide some way. And, and we do that through our work at Naturally Boulder. Great. Now, I was looking at some data, Bill, and it was telling me from what I read that the natural and organic food industry in Colorado contributes over $2 billion to the state's economy and supports over 22,000 jobs across the state. That's meaningful for both people and for the planet as sustainability is at the heart of this maturing industry. What do you think the next three to five years will look like for both the industry and Colorado's economy? Yeah, I think... Um... Kind of more the same, Ryan, but also uh, maybe a little bit more emphasis on connection with agriculture and farming. Um, you know, we're we're an industry that that statistic you quoted uh, came from a, the business research division at the University of Colorado a study we conducted, and we we know that there's a consumer packaged goods industry in this state and in in this community. Um, but we also know that there's farmers here in the state of Colorado, and there's a lot of work being done around soil and soil health and carbon sequestration. So I, I see over the next few years here, a little bit more of a blending of those two things, a little bit more connection to where the food is grown and how it's grown, and also just a continual innovation pipeline. I just don't see it stopping. I, I, I We're 17 years now into Naturally Boulder and I have not seen the innovation slow down at all. So there's still a lot of products out there that we can, you know, we can fix, I guess, if you look at it that way. Um, and and I so I, I see the innovation continuing. I see the uh, bright, passionate young entrepreneurs uh, continuing to do what they do, and the numbers increasing. But again, you know, we're still scratching and clawing uphill to get a bigger percentage of the food total food sought, uh, sold and bought in this country. Um, roughly only one percent of the land uh, farmed in this country is organic right now. So. It, it's still a relatively small percentage. Um, we, we need to do a better job with that from a climate perspective and a, and a whole lot of other things. Right. And when you say more of the same, of course, you're talking about just uh, more just continued growth, right? As, as more and more Americans, as more and more people, as humanity, we'll call it that, continue to have more and more appetite for healthier foods and better ways of living and more sustainable living. That yeah. this, this, this area, this innovation, this growth you see continuing. Absolutely, because health is really at the core of it, Ryan. And, you know, with healthcare costs the way they are and, and so many Americans facing health issues, they're starting to turn to food and they understand that. And during the pandemic, we saw that a lot with functional ingredient products. I mean, people turn to functional ingredients to kind of protect themselves against uh, the elements out there. And, and a lot of companies during COVID had great success um, because 
the natural products industry has been around for a long time and it's where the center of it has been, you know, um, things that are good for you, good, good products, um, things that will help you boost your immune system, uh, your heart health, your gut health, your, your brain health. And, and so consumers gravitated back to that during the pandemic as they cocooned in and they loaded up their pantries. Um, definitely health at the center of it. No doubt, Bill. I mean, as a, as a father and uh, myself, obviously you're thinking about, you know, your kids and, and, and you want them to be healthy. You want to encourage healthy habits with, with your children and then yourself. I don't know about you, but as I've gotten older, you start to realize the things you put in your body and how it affects you and how it makes you feel and, and everything from your physical to your mental uh, health. And so all these things, I think we're, we're, we are all becoming more aware these things. Absolutely. I mean, I became a vegan at 50, so I'm six, about to turn 65. So I, you know, I just uh, thought, well, I'm, I'm almost there. My, might as well go there, you know, yeah. and I haven't felt better, you know, it just, you just um, taking care of yourself is really important. And food is, is a real key component. It's something we have a decision on every day. Yeah. I haven't got to the vegan stage yet, but I do like some of those plant-based foods. I'm yeah, definitely please. of some of the impossible. Um, of yeah. yeah. So, yeah. all right, Bill. All right, so I had a chance to attend uh, Naturally Boulder's annual Pitch Slam event. What a great time at the Boulder Jewish Community Center. I met so many small business owners in the natural products field. This Shark Tank style event gives five Pitch Slammers an opportunity to tell their story to a broader audience, hopefully earning additional support. From beverages to donuts to dried pasta, it was quite a spectacle to behold. What's the purpose behind the pitch slab and how is it making a difference for small businesses? Right. So this is our 17th year, Ryan, and we've uh, we picked some winners over the years, that panel of judges. It varies every year. But, uh, you know, the purpose really is to bring the community together and, and highlight a few of the emerging companies in town. Uh, they have to be small. They have to be innovative. And a panel of judges selects the finalists to pitch. And then we select our judging panel to select the winner from that group and then we build a prize package out and what is it meant to people well if, if the name justin's means anything to you that certainly didn't hurt him or evil foods um and i will tell you a fun story this year's winner um which which was this uh, frescoes beverage um yeah uh, you know, shortly after the event, we live streamed the event this year, and we did that last year because we couldn't meet in person. We had that was our only option, but we live streamed this year, and already the winner of the pitch slam this year has gotten interest from an investor down in uh, Tampa who, who uh, reached out through our network of affiliate uh, naturally network and wanted to get in touch with the winners, Juan and Charlie, and I put them in touch with them on Sunday night. And so wow. right right there, who knows if it'll go anywhere, maybe they'll get some investment money, but you know, the winner can, can uh, um, claim the prize, but also potentially, you know, good future investment opportunity. And all of the pitchers are winners. I mean, just think about it. You know, it's, it takes a lot of guts to get up there, share your story with the community to a panel of judges, compete and and uh, and really just, you know, show your stuff. And those 40 booths that you visited while you're there, they're all winners too. I mean, they're just amazing. That's right. Well, please give our encouragement to the entire natural products and organic community. Tell them to keep making us a better, healthier people, planet, and economy. Bill Capsalis of Naturally Boulder, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Ryan. Great to be here. Thank you.